O oh God, which this blood made to revenge his death, O oh earth, which this blood drinks to revenge his death, either heaven with lightning strike the murderer dead, or earth gape open wide and eat him quick, as thou dost swallow up this good king's blood, which his hell-governed arm hath butchered. Lady, you know no rules of charity, which renders good for bad, blessings for curses. Villain, thou know'st no law of God nor man, no beast so fierce, but knows some touch of pity. But I know none, and therefore am no beast. Oh, wonderful when devils tell the truth. More wonderful when angels are so angry. Vouchsafe divine perfection of a woman of these supposed crimes to give me leave by circumstance but to acquit myself. Vouchsafe diffused infection of a man of these known evils but to give me leave by circumstance to curse thy cursed self. Fairer than tongue can name thee, let me have some patient leisure to excuse myself. Fouler than heart can think thee. Thou canst make no excuse current but to hang thyself. By such despair I should accuse myself. By despairing shalt thou stand and excused for doing worthy vengeance on thyself that didst unworthy slaughter upon others. Who say that I slew them not? Who say they were not slain? But dead they are, and devilish slave by thee. I did not kill your husband. <laughs> Why, then he is alive. Nay, he is dead, and slain by Edward's hand. In thy foul throat thou liest. Queen Margaret saw thy murderous falchion smoking in his blood, the which thou once didst bend against her breast, but that thy brothers beat aside the point. I was provoked by her slanderous tongue, which laid their guilt upon my guiltless shoulders. Thou was provoked by thy bloody mind, which never dressed on aught but butcheries. Didst thou not kill this king? I grant ye. Dost grant me, hedgehog? Then God grant me too. Thou mayst be damned for that wicked deed. Oh, he was gentle, mild, and virtuous. A fitter for the king of heaven that hath him. He is in heaven where thou shalt never come. Let him thank me that hope to send him thither. For he was fitter for that place than earth. And thou unfit for any place but hell. Yes, one place else if you will hear me name it. Some dungeon. Your bedchamber. Ill rest betide the chamber where thou liest. Oh, will it, madam, till I lie with you? I hope so. I know so. But, gentle Lady Anne, to leave this keen encounter of our wits and fall something into a slower method is not the cause of these timeless deaths of these Plantagenets, Henry and Edward, as blameful as the execution. Thou wast the cause and most accursed effect. Your beauty was the cause of that effect. Your beauty that did haunt me in my sleep to undertake the death of all the world, that I might live one hour in your sweet bosom. If I thought that, I tell thee, homicide, these nails should rent that beauty from my cheek. These eyes could not endure your beauty's rack. As all the world is cheered by the sun, so I, by that, it is my day, my life. Black night or shade thy day, and death thy life. Curse not thyself, fair creature, thou art both. I would I were to be revenged on thee. It is a quarrel most unnatural to be revenged on him that loveth you. It is a quarrel just and reasonable to be revenged on him that killed my husband. He that bereft thee, lady, of thy husband, did it to help thee to a better husband. His better doth not breathe upon the earth. He lives that loves thee better than he could. Name him. Plantagenet. Why, that was he. The selfsame name, but one of better nature. Where is he? Here. <laughs> Why dost thou spit at me? Would it were mortal poison for thy sake? Never came poison from so sweet a place. Never hung poison on a fouler toad. Out of my sight, thou dost infect mine eyes. Thine eyes, sweet lady, have infected mine. Would they were basilisks to strike thee dead. I would they were that I might die at once, for now they kill me with a living death. Those eyes of thine, from mine, have drawn salt tears. Shamed their aspect with store of childish drops thy beauty hath, and made them blind with weeping. I never sued to friend nor enemy, could never teach my tongue sweet smoothing word, but now thy beauty has proposed my fee. My proud heart sues and prompts my tongue to speak. Teach not thy lip 
such scorn, for it was made for kissing, lady, not for such contempt. Lo, if thy revengeful heart cannot forgive, here I lend thee this sharp pointed sword, which if thou please to hide in this true breast, and let the soul forth that adoreth thee, I lay it naked to the deadly stroke, and humbly beg the death upon my knee. Nay, do not pause, for I did kill King Henry, but t'was thy beauty that provoked me. Nay, now, dispatch, t'was I that stabbed young Edward, but t'was thy heavenly face that set me on. Take up the sword again, or take up me. Arise, dissembler. Though I wish thy death, I will not be thy executioner. Then bid me kill myself, and I will do it. I have already. That was in thy rage. Speak it again, and even with the word, this hand, which for thy love did kill thy love, shalt for thy love kill a far truer love. To both their deaths shalt thou be accessory. I would I knew thy heart. It is figured in my tongue. I fear me both are false. There never was man true. Well. Well, put up your sword. Say then my peace is made. That shalt thou know hereafter. But shall I live in hope? All men, I hope, live so. Vouchsafe to wear this ring. To take is not to give. Look. How my ring encompasseth thy finger. Even so thy breast encloseth my poor heart. Wear both of them, for both of them are thine. 